Hi, my name is Saj and I'm the director at Blank Slate Films and I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about the Canon 5D Mark II specifically about its video capabilities. Now, I just want to make this brief because the last time I attempted to record a video, it, I think it lasted half an hour because there was so much to cover. But basically I wanted to talk to photographers who already have cameras like the 5D or the 7D or the 60D and they want to use it to create little video and add a little video to their work and offer it to their clients. Maybe in their slideshow they could do that. You know, if you're a photographer, you probably have a variety of lenses and things like that. And a lot of it is going to work just fine for video. So I want to talk about the, basically the overview of what I use for video and some of the settings that I use that gets you the optimal video quality. My favorite lens to use is the one that came with the camera when I bought the 5D and it's the 24 to 105 millimeter f4 IS lens. Now you're thinking it's f4, most photographers do most of their work with uh, 2.8 lenses, you know, zoom and you know, you could go as low as 1.2 lenses on your primes, but this lens is is a IS lens, meaning for video work, it, it stabilizes your image very well. I mean, I, you know, that also helps in your photo photographs, but at f4 with the image stabilizer handheld I could really do some great work with this lens. Another lens I like to use is the 50 millimeter 1.4 or even the 1.8 that's it's a very inexpensive lens but when I do interview works and the subject's sitting there and there's little movement I want my f-stop to be as wide open as it could be so I could shoot at a 1.8 or a 1.4 the subject sitting there I get my focus and the background looks beautiful, it's out of focus, it looks very cinematic and the 24 to 105 millimeter is what I use for my handheld shots or when I'm following a subject I'm walking around. Let's talk about the settings in the camera because there's there's a few different settings that you need to know about and if you go through through your menu the first one you're gonna be able to look at is the movie record size. Now 920 by 1080 is the highest format in HD that's where you want to be. You don't want to do the small pixel dimension. Now 30 or 24, what's the difference? Well 24 is 24 frames per second. Cinema, film, 24 frames per second. If you want that cinematic look, my choice is always 24. Another setting you want to focus on obviously is your exposure as far as your f-stop, your shutter and your ISO. Let's start with ISO. Your ISO setting is basically you know, I wouldn't say limited, but you want to stay in a range between 200 and 1000 for video. In photographs, especially with the 5D, you could go as high as, you know, 3200 maybe, and it will be very sharp if you have enough light. But in the video world, I really don't like 1600 or 2000. It just looks grainy to me. So if I could help it, and if I don't require light, and if there's plenty of light, if I'm outdoors, I'm at 200. If I'm indoors and I have plenty of light, I'm at 400 or 800. And if I really need light, 1,000. But if I could help it, that's about it. That's as far as I'm willing to go. If you want a grainy look, yeah, shoot your ISO higher and you could get that. As far as shutter, now you're very limited. In photography, you got a huge range of your shutter speed. But in video, especially in the 5D, you cannot go less than 30th of a second. My choice for for shutter speed is 1 50th. When I'm shooting 24 frames, I'm on 1 50th. And I'm on 1 60th if I'm shooting 30 frames. Your f-stop now varies. And that brings us to talking about focus because these cameras are too tough to focus with because, because of the huge sensor and you know these, these fast lenses, sometimes it's really hard to keep track of focus with your subject. If you're just holding the camera, the subject's not moving, you're getting a moving portrait or an interview or whatever it may be, keep it at 1.8, 1.4, get that background out of focus, put a prime lens on, get that look. If you're on a zoom lens, stay at a 2.8, stay as wide open as you can, get that look. But if you have a moving subject, raise your f-stop. You need more light, raise your ISO. You know, lower your shutter to 30th. Usually, I also put a neck strap on because I could have a little bit more stability on the camera and I really hold the camera tight. Sometimes I even hold it against my face. 
so I'm able to kind of support the camera. I mean, I have support rigs that I use for my bigger jobs, but if I'm just running and gunning and trying to get the shot, in fact, most of the times in a photography shoot, you're just trying to, you're just trying to get a little video clip, you know, put it against your face. And if you have an IS lens, that makes a huge difference. Another thing, always have your camera on manual focus when you're doing video. I would recommend getting a fast CF card. In fact, the ones I use here, they're 16 gig cards, but the size doesn't matter as much as the speed. This is a 60 meg, this is 60 megabytes per second. 15 megabytes per second is the lowest. You should really go with these. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems. This is $90 and it's great, 16 gig. I could shoot 45 minutes at the 24 frame format. And I have two of them and I could swap them out all day and shoot. So as long as you have those and you have yourself a nice lens, you should be good to go. I'll continue making videos because there's so much more I want to talk about. There's a whole, there's a whole video about audio. There's a whole video on how to get, you know, the best color. Many, many more things to, to come because this is a big topic. These cameras are very unique, but you will get the most amazing video for the price nothing could compare to what the video quality of these cameras are nowadays.